Mistral 7B model has just been launched and I'm here to look through some of the benchmarks and do some evaluation for myself. As a quick overview, I'll take a look through what's different about Mistral in architecture and design choices compared to Llama 2, including some ideas on what we don't know. Then I'll do a quick review of the benchmark performance that Mistral themselves present. I won't dwell too long on that because I want to move to a live Trellis research evaluation which will involve testing Mistral on three questions, and then finally evaluating Mistral 7B on some fine tuning. The architecture of Mistral 7B is very similar to the Lamet 2 architectures. According to the announcement, it claims to outperform Lamet 2 13B on all benchmarks and 34B on some benchmarks. Now that's Lamet 1 because there isn't a Lamet 2 that exists in 34B format, except for the code Lamet version. We can take a look at some of the performance benchmarks here. Mistral on MMLU, which is scientific reasoning, performs between Lama 2 13B and 70B, so somewhere here. On reasoning, performs like Lama effective size 38B. Then on comprehension, like Lama effective size 21B. And on knowledge, performs pretty much like Lama 13B. So the benchmark performance for Mistral 7B is really good. What then could make Mistral 7B better than Lama 7B? I'm going to put it in two categories. One are some technical improvements that are disclosed here in the launch, and the other are some possible improvements that may be there I will speculate on. The improvements that are described in the launch involve using grouped query attention and sliding window attention. Both of these improvements relate to improving the speed of the model, not the quality. In fact, it's possible that using these improvements will slightly degrade the quality, in my opinion. They both refer to attention, which is how a token takes in information from earlier tokens, and they involve tricks or shortcuts that reduce the number of calculations that you need to do. If you want to stick around at the end, I'll talk more about that. But really, if I think about why Mistral 7B might be stronger than Lama 7B, the main reason I see is that it may have either better quality data, which is not disclosed, or it may simply have been trained for longer than the Lama 7B model. Here I am in the Lama 2 paper, and I'm looking at a graph of the training perplexity versus time. And what I'm showing you here is that the Lama models are still improving as they get out to 2 trillion tokens. So in principle, if you designed a model exactly like Lama 2, and you just trained it for longer, you would be able to get to better performance than what the Lama 2 7B or any of the Lama 2 models do. To summarize, there are some speed improvement tricks here in Mistral 7B, but I suspect that if there is an improvement and we'll check it out for ourselves, it's perhaps due to training the model for longer or using a better, cleaner data set than what was used for training Lama 7B and the other Lama 2 models. We're done with a quick overview of Mistral and benchmark performance. What I'm going to do next is evaluate for myself in some kind of esoteric ways the performance of Lama 7B versus Mistral 7B. And then I want to tell you about some fine tuning I did on Lama 7B and the same fine tuning on Mistral. To run an evaluation on Mistral versus Lama, I'm going to load both of the models in the same notebook and I'm going to do it using RunPod. I'll log into RunPod and head over to the Secure Cloud section and I'm going to deploy an A6000. I'm going to choose RunPod PyTorch 2.0.1 and make sure that I can start a Jupyter Notebook. It's going to take just a moment to deploy, so I'll come back and enter the Jupyter Notebook. Our pod is up and running, so I'm now going to connect, and I'll connect by using Jupyter Lab, which will open it up here in my browser. And I'm now going to open up two different notebooks that will allow us to compare Mistral and Lama. The first notebook here will allow us to compare Lama 7B, 13B, and Mistral 7B. I'll put a copy of the notebook on GitHub uh, on the Trellis research page. You can find it under Install Guides and then go to LLM Comparison. Now, I'm running with 48 gigabytes of VRAM, so I can fit quantized versions of the 7B the 13B and the Mistral 7B model. I'm running them all in bits and bytes quantization to four bits. I would have preferred to do it in AWQ, but there have been some issues with the hugging face implementation that stopped me from doing that. It would have been a bit quicker to run. 
So after I installed everything, I moved ahead and loaded all of the models. And indeed, it was possible to load uh, Llama 7B, 13B, and Mistral 7B. After the tokenizers were set up, I just did a quick inference test on all three models. And I asked, here's Llama 7B, list all the planets in the solar system. It gets all eight of them. Llama 13B gets all eight of them. Mistral, as you can see, the format's a bit different. Makes sense, it's a different model. But it gets all eight of those models correct. What I'm going to do then is a comparison on three metrics that I just came up with myself and I thought would be uh, fun to take a look at. Let me minimize this side window here. The three we look at are first returning a sequence in reverse. So quite simply, you send in a sequence like AB to the language model and you ask it to return that sequence in reverse. This turns out to be quite a difficult task, even for models like GPT-4 have quite a bit of difficulty going beyond uh, sometimes even six, seven or eight characters in a row. The second test I'm going to do is pass key retrieval, which is where I'll embed a pass key within a long uh, piece of text and see if the model is able to pick it out. And the third one is code generation. I'll ask it to generate a piece of code and see if I can then run that code. So for the first test, return a sequence in reverse. Um, I create a random sequence. Well, I initiate it with AB. And then I ask the model to return it in reverse. And if it gets it correct, then I ask it to do another sequence. So here, Lama 7B, you can see it's able to reverse AB. Um, but already with ABQ, it's not able to reverse that. It thinks the reverse of ABQ is QAB, which it's not. Uh, so it failed at a sequence length of three. At 13B, um, the reverse it gets of AB is BA, but the reverse of ABS it does not get. It thinks it's SB. And for Mistral, I again uh, say BA, it reverses it, but it fails on reversing uh, a sequence length of three. All of these tests here are stochastic. So if you decide to run this test again, you will get different results because if you use a different sequence, sometimes it will get three, sometimes it won't. But broadly, as I ran this many times, I found that um, there wasn't a huge amount of difference between the different models here. The next task I have here is code generation. And what I asked the model to do is create some Python code that prints the first n numbers of the Fibonacci series. Uh, I just picked 10, so it's going to print a snippet to uh, write the first 10 numbers of Fibonacci. And indeed, we get some code from all three of the models. Um, so here, let's run the code. This is the Llama 7B model. Um, it does not print the first 10 numbers. It actually prints the 11th number. So there's something off about the code for 7B. It kind of is in the right domain, but doesn't get the problem correct. Here we have Llama 13B. Uh, Llama 13B does not even get this problem correct in this case. Um, and by the way, I've set temperature to zero here to try and minimize any randomization in the results. And in the case of Mistral, I have gotten some code that actually does present the right results. So Mistral provides the first uh, 10 numbers in the Fibonacci series exactly as was requested. So definitely in this coding test, uh, and it's just one test, the Mistral 7B model is doing well. Now, I if I had to go further, I would be interested to compare Code Llama and see does Code Llama do better. I suspect it would. Um, but anyway, you can see that Mistral is doing well in coding, which maybe isn't surprising because explicitly there is a coding data set that's within uh, the Mistral training set. There's some coding within the Llama 2 training set too, and I'm not aware of the exact percentages and how they differ. The last test, which I think is underused, is a passkey retrieval test. You take uh, some kind of a file. I uploaded a file. I'll actually add it to the GitHub repo. It's a file a summary of the Berkshire 2023 transcript. And not a summary, it is the transcript. And what I do then is embed the passkey. It's easiest to see it here. So here we have the transcript, and I've embedded this passkey here. And I simply ask the model respond with the passkey contained in the above text. And this is the response from Llama 7B. Uh, it doesn't even try to give us the pass key. It just responds with more text. So Llama 7B is clearly quite weak on pass key retrieval. Llama 13B, uh, again, I give the exact same passage. And it is able to retrieve the pass key. Uh, what's interesting is it strips the word pass key from it. But I think that's still a reasonable answer. U89DSNAKJ8 
U89DSNAKJ8, so it gets it right. And in the Mistral case, um, the passkey for the event is Berkshire Hathaway. So Mistral clearly does not get the passkey correct. It doesn't retrieve it, um, which uh, it is a bit better than 7B because at least it's looking for a passkey, whereas 7B just uh, continues and waffles on with the repeating of some of the text. The last evaluation of Mistral 7B I did was supervised fine-tuning. In a previous video, I did this on Llama 13B to train on a data set covering the rules of touch rugby. Touch rugby is an obscure sport, so it's not very well understood by Llama, which makes it a good test case for doing some fine-tuning. Now, I used the exact same script on Mistral 7B as I did in some testing on Llama 7B. Let's take a quick look at some of those results. First, I'm going to scroll down and we can take a look at the training graph. It's right here. You can see the training loss drops towards zero and the eval loss drops, but then plateaus. The eval loss starts to oscillate and typically I find that the best results are just before the oscillation starts, after which the results kind of degrade again. Here I am at a question set I've generated. It's a manual test question set. And we look at checkpoint 88, which is where the model performs best in fine tuning. Let's look at some of these answers by Mistral. How many players are on the field? Uh, seven, the answer is six, so that's wrong. Forward pass is wrong. The meters to retreat is correct, seven. So that's one right out of three. How many substitutions? Uh, that's incorrect. How long is half time? That's incorrect. It's five, not 15. Does, how does the game commence? It's kind of close, but not quite right. How many meters must the femur just retreat when there's a penalty? Um, it gets that wrong. How many touches prior to a change in possession? Six. Uh, the answer is six, so it gets that correct. So now maybe two and a half correct. What happens if players touch prior to making a pass? It gets that wrong. And actually it gets that correct, so that's uh, three and a half. A change of possession occurs. And in touch rugby, how many points is it try worth? Five, it's actually one. So Mistral here gets three out of ten, maybe three and a half out of ten correct. And the comparison is with when I fine tune exactly in the same way Llama 7B. Uh, it gets roughly two to four correct. So pretty much around the same as uh, Llama 7B. And when I train the 13B model, which is covered in my supervised fine tuning video, I'm able to get 10 of these questions, some of which are actually quite difficult. I'm able to get seven out of 10 correct using Llama 13B. So for me, it seems clear, at least for this data set, that the 13B model is able to be fine-tuned to much higher performance than either of the 7B models. It's possibly just that having more parameters allows you to better get a fit around that new data. Um, I don't know that for sure, but empirically, the 13B model for Llama seems to be much more trainable or fine-tunable than either Mistral or Llama 7B. To sum things up on Mistral 7B, I think it's comparable to Llama 2, and perhaps it's better in some cases. Clearly, it seemed better in that little coding example that I showed for evaluation. However, just because the models come out, there's definitely less tooling available. For example, it's not straightforward to merge LoRa's. You can do LoRa training using bits and bytes if you have a Llama 2 model, and then you can merge the LoRa onto the base model, although even that, there are some challenges. But as with any model, Mistral's tooling will improve as more and more platforms onboard it. So I would still say that for me, using Llama is probably handier for a while, although uh, using Mistral then as tooling gets better probably makes sense or at least is just as good. Stepping back, it's worth remembering that Llama 2 is undertrained. You couldn't train it for longer and you would get better results. In fact, it could be cool if Facebook releases a version that has been trained for longer, they wouldn't have to change anything other than put more compute into it and it would perform better. It's great to see Mistral come out with some open source models. Llama has changed the game for a lot of developers and what they can do and having extra models in the mix is fantastic. I hope that Mistral can innovate along some new directions, especially along improving performance in ways that don't involve just training for longer. That will be really fun and a great contribution. As promised, I'm going to do a very quick technical review of two of the features highlighted here that are different about Mistral. The first, first is grouped query attention. Attention, as I previously said, is where in generating a token, you refer to information in the previous tokens that are in the input sequence. And this is typically done using key matrices, value matrices, and query matrices. 
normally these matrices, well, the base design approach is to have them of the same size. But one kind of shortcut or one trick is to, in fact, group together and share the value and key matrices and only keep the same initial large size for the query matrix. So basically, by shrinking down or taking a shortcut on the key and value matrices, you're able to reduce the amount of computations that are required when you refer to information in the previous tokens. So this leads to a speed up in the performance, particularly for longer sequences. The second feature here is using a sliding window attention to handle longer sequences. Um, as I said, each token being generated involves paying attention to all of the previous tokens. That's the typical approach. Let me show you a quick example here. So the typical approach would be in generating the 10th token to pay attention to the inputs of all previous nine tokens. Because the transformer has multiple layers, you can take advantage of that to use a smaller window of attention. Instead of paying attention to all of the input tokens, you can just pay attention within one layer to a small subset. And that layer is then going to get information propagated from the previous window. And that layer will get information propagated from the previous window. So even though this last token position here is only paying attention to a small window, because there are multiple layers, you're actually getting information far deeper. The numerical comparison is if you have a thousand tokens of context window, but you have 10 layers, then you maybe only need a window size of 100 because you have a propagation of 100 for each layer. So at the hundredth layer, you are still getting information all the way from the first of 1000 tokens. Now on a technical note, and I'm unsure in what I'm saying here, but this approach is a little bit like what is used in some techniques to extend the context length of language models like LM Infinite. LM Infinite takes a model trained on say a thousand tokens and then allows you to extrapolate to larger token sizes. And it does that as well using, kind of using the analogy of this sliding window approach. But what LM Infinite finds is that the pass key retrieval, I showed a demo of that earlier in this video, the pass key retrieval just isn't as good once you move outside using full attention. And I'm just wondering if the reason why Lama or Mistral 7B wasn't able to get um, the pass key is perhaps associated with using the sliding window approach as opposed to a full attention approach. Now, it's possible that it's not getting the pass key simply because it's a small 7B model, but I think it's an interesting question to ask. Just before finishing, I'll show you another uh, representation of using sliding window. So here in matrix format, uh, the idea, well, as I'm interpreting it here, if you're at the last token, you're paying attention to all other tokens. That's why it's shaded light blue. So you have this matrix that's going to link any one token with all of the other tokens. But the idea in using sliding window is maybe a bit like uh, the light blue here. Instead of paying attention within a given layer to all of the tokens, you're just paying attention to the neighboring tokens within a window. And the way that you're getting information from the earlier tokens is through the propagation graph here that we showed.